Okay, so far we talked about uh, the slip in single crystals under applied stress. Uh, we will see slip along the slip plane along the direction of slip directions. But what happens uh, when this location move in polycrystals? Generally, polycrystals and polycrystals, uh, if you remember from previous chapters, um, we have different direction of growth of grains so they meet at grain boundaries so we have lots of grain boundaries actually these uh, grain boundaries uh, are acting like barriers against the motion of uh, dislocation, dislocation so if we have group of dislocation which is under stress they go say for example to the right side of this um, grain when they bump to the grain border the grain border acts as a barrier so they, it will stop it to some extent that's why we expect polycrystals uh, to be stronger than single crystals uh, the other characteristics of uh, polycrystal is that the slip planes and directions what we know as angle gamma and phi in the previous session we discussed about it they change from one grain to another grain and it's obvious because of the direction of the slip planes in each uh, grain is different from the other one. The result, uh, the resolved shear stress is also vary from uh, one grain to another grain because these values are changing. And therefore, the grain that has uh, the largest value of tau r, depending on the value of uh, gamma and phi, will yield first, and then the other uh, grains that are less. Uh, favorably oriented the yield after the first grain. Uh, in order to create different behavior in different direction we can uh, create anisotropy in polycrystals. One of the method is uh, by rolling of the material. You see the microstructure of a metal before rolling where uh, grains are having almost the same size and they are non-directional and here you see a microstructure after being rolled you see all grains are elongated along the direction of rolling so we have anisotropy uh, material here which means the behavior of material along this direction going to be different from uh, the thickness direc uh, direction while here the, the properties were expected to be the same in all directions we do an experiment, we cut a part of a material which has been rolled along the rolling direction and then we, if this material impacts with a solid surface, of course if everything is anisotropic we expect to see a circular section uh, in the impact uh, surface. But when we look at the impact surface we see uh, it doesn't form circular section and it's non-circular. This non-circularity is due to anisotropic uh, deformation of the roll metal. You see along the plate thickness direction we see less deformation and we have more deformation in this direction. So this experiment shows that we can make a stronger, we can make materials, metals stronger in certain direction or maybe in all uh, directions. To make materials stronger, there are four strategies based on what we have learned so far. The first one is reduce the grain size. You remember that uh, grain boundaries are barriers to slip. So if we reduce them, we are actually increasing their number. So we are increasing the number of barriers to slip. So we can have a stronger material. Also bear in mind that um, barrier strength increases with increasing angle of misorientation. So if for example this angle is having a less degree with the green line, of course the dislocation can move forward. But if this one is exactly perpendicular to this uh, motion, of course it provides uh, the largest value of strength. By making grains smaller and increasing the number of grains we are actually increasing the chance of uh, 
angle of misorientation to be uh, increased compared to the case that we have uh, compared to the case that we have less number of uh, grains the dependency of yield strength on the grain size has been defined uh, by hall pitch's equation uh, in this equation that you can see here uh, d is the average grain diameter sigma 0 and ky are constant for a particular material uh, of course decreasing the size of grain decreases the value of d and you see the whole term here gonna be increased therefore the yield stress can be increased by decreasing the number of grain size uh, second method or strategy for strengthening of material is taking advantage of uh, solid solution in solid solution we have uh, an impurity of material B which is uh, resolved into the host material host A here if the uh, here the impurity atom uh, distort the lattice and generate lattice strain no matter if the atom is uh, bigger or smaller than the host uh, atom these strains act um, as barrier to dislocation motion as you can see here these strains act as barrier against the motion of the dislocation if we have a smaller substitutional impurity atom like this shape of course uh, we will have tensile lattice strain here and here and if we have larger substitutional impurity imposed to the host molecule then uh, we have compressive uh, strains imposed on host uh, atoms and again you see that uh, these local stresses again op oppose uh, the motion of the dislocation as shown here uh, bear in mind if we have an edge dislocation which sits here of course we have the compression side here and we have the tensile side uh, on the side that there is no extra half plane now, of course if these two fields um, are supposed to move due to stress and then they meet with um, material that has solid solution inside uh, they feel or they Uh, they face opposing forces uh, due to the impurity atoms that go into solid solution uh, and this is typically happen happening in alloys as you can see here uh, small impurities tend to concentrate at dislocations um, and they make regions of uh, compressive strains they provide compression due to the making of this half plane here and at the same time we have partial cancellation of uh, this location compressive strains and the uh, impurity atom tensile strain we have tensile strain here because we deal with um, smaller impurities so they part of that they, uh, they cancel out this reduces mobility of this location and increases strength of the material on the other side if we deal with large impurities of course they tend to concentrate at dislocations so they provide compressive strain here and dislocation will happen in a place in the host material like this one and as I said we have uh, compressive strain imposed on host atoms by uh, a large impurity an example of uh, solid solution strengthening is uh, provided here here copper has been strengthened by introducing uh, uh, nitrogen to the material uh, as you can see here tensile strength and yield strength increase uh, with the percent or the weight percent of nitrogen by increasing the concentration of nitrogen you see tensile strength and yield strength are increasing um, so empirically we can find this relation that the yield strength has uh, a direct relation with the root square square root of uh, concentration and in these examples we see that um, alloying actually increases tensile strength and yield strength 
Uh, the third method for strengthening is uh, precipitation. Strengthening precipitation is caused by impurity precipitate uh, precipitation uh, in in material like metals. Uh, usually, these precipitates are hard, and they are of course hard. Precipitate, uh, hard uh, precipitates are difficult to shear, as you can see here. If we have uh, um, this location and this is under shear stress when it wants to pass uh, from the hard precipitates of course it uh, face with difficulty and this result in the strengthening of the material so here uh, the large shear stress as shown here needed to move uh, this location towards precipitate and of course it should shear it so that it can pass and move forward if you look at the same thing uh, from top view uh, this is actually happening in especially in ceramics um, precipitates in metal like silicon carbide in iron or in aluminum from top view you see these uh, hard precipitates there's uh, hard ceramic precipitates in metals and when this dislocation advances to the precipitates uh, these uh, precipitates act as pinning site and they have a spacing pinning sites having a spacing of s and this result in yield point and yield stress to be relative to to the reciprocal of the spacing so if the spacing is becoming less it means that there are more precipitates therefore the value of yield point or yield stress will increase an application of precipitation strengthening is shown in the internal wing uh, structure of this Boeing. Here, uh, aluminum, as shown here, is uh, strengthened with uh, precipitates formed by alloying. This is the microstructure of the aluminum uh, used in the wing structure of this uh, Boeing. Uh, the last method of strengthening is uh, cold work or strain hardening. We discussed about strain hardening in the uh, previous chapter. Uh, the percent of cold work, at it, as it was discussed also in chapter 8, is defined as the change in the area divided by the initial area or cross-sectional area times 100. How strain hardening is happening in different materials it can be done by forging when a material is forming the shape of a die or mold by force uh, it can be performed by drawing when a, is a material is pulled through a die by tensile force of course the cross-sectional area here on the right side after the die is smaller than left side uh, strain hardening can be performed by rolling similar to this phenomena is happening when a material is under two rollers see the material is pressed and pushed towards uh, forward and the cross-sectional area here is smaller than the cross-sectional the initial cross-section and of course we will have elongated car uh, grain boundaries of grains along the direction of the rolling and also it can be created by extrusion where a material is pushed by force to go through die and then again we have a smaller cross section uh, these are uh, different examples of a strain hardening in, in all of these examples as you can see um, the final cross-sectional area is smaller than the initial cross-sectional er uh, area and this results in a percent of cold work and of course we are expecting to see higher value of strength and uh, yield stress in the material.